New Zealand-wide airborne emergency service seem to be flying into a squall of red tape and regulation. But in the United States, the problem is almost the reverse. A proliferation of poorly regulated emergency services flying too many hours. American hospitals usually contract emergency evacuation work out to companies who supply both helicopters and pilots, typically Vietnam veterans. And in the last 10 years, those pilots have transported over 300,000 critically ill Americans to hospital, often making the difference between life and death. But as Harry Reasoner reports for CBS 60 Minutes, the bad news is that one in every six of the helicopters that flew for American hospitals last year crashed. Aravac to Scramble, Desert Sam has a three This is Aravac in Phoenix, Arizona. It's owned by a group of hospitals who contract for three helicopters, manned and maintained 24 hours a day. It's one of the busiest services in the country. Four minutes and 48 seconds from emergency call to takeoff. Within the five minute limit promised by the EMS helicopter program. The idea is to get the patients from the accident scene to the hospital within an hour, and you'll have a much better chance of living. In the emergency room, they call that hour window the golden hour. For this patient, that hour is crucial. Head injuries, spinal and spleen injuries need the attention of a trauma center. The patient was first taken by ground ambulance to a hospital that had no trauma center, so Aravac was called. For the group of hospitals that pays for Aravac, it means one more trauma patient paying big bills. For this patient, it means proper medical care within an hour. What the pilot knows, and the nurse, and the medic, and the patient probably doesn't know, is that 20% of all medevac operations had an accident last year. That's three times the helicopter industry average. And 1986 was not just a bad year. It was like that the year before, and the year before that, and the year before that, and so on. And so far, 1987 doesn't look to be any better. January 8, 1987, Greenville, North Carolina. East Care's helicopter crash, killing all aboard. The pilot, two flight nurses, and the three and a half month old patient. It's dead beyond recognition, the bodies as well as the aircraft. The only recognizable part of the aircraft is the tail section. Although the cause of this accident is still being investigated, there's some indication that a fire broke out on the helicopter. If it was an act of God, it would put this accident in a distinct minority. According to the EMS Pilots Association, 90% of the accidents have been due to pilot error. There's no quibbling about that figure at all. The outrageous thing is that, uh, that I think it, it pretty well outlines where the problem area is. But uh, it certainly hadn't moved anybody to any action. Willie Dykes was lead pilot for East Care. He, like most EMS pilots, had flown combat missions in Vietnam. After a little more than a year, he walked away from his job at East Care because they refused to add a fourth pilot to rotate the flying schedule. He left just six months ago. And you quit? Yes, I did. You're scared? Yep, you're right, Harry Reasoner. I was scared to death. Well, <laughs> how about that? Well, that's Did you ever hear a helicopter pilot say that? Dykes isn't alone in admitting fear. Other EMS pilots around the country say they're afraid they'll crash because they're flying tired. These three pilots flew with Aravac until last November. I was physically and mentally exhausted, and uh, I resigned because I just didn't want to kill anybody. Bob McDonald has been flying helicopters for 23 years, including time in Vietnam and Alaska. He says EMS flying compares to combat, in that you never know when you'll be called, where you'll have to fly, or what the conditions will be. The urgency comes from knowing there's a dying patient at the other end. Well, those guys are down there. I want to get the next one here. But he says with three pilots manning a helicopter 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Flying for Aravac became too dangerous. Jeff Boatman and Fred Raby agree. I've had to actually stay at the hospital and, and stay overnight till the next morning when my next shift came on, you know, uh, uh, because I was so exhausted I couldn't even make it 10 miles home. Did you ever actually go to sleep while you were flying a mission? I have. Well, not totally. I mean, I've nodded off. Fred? I've nodded off quite a few times. 
I've yelled real loud at myself and wiggled my legs back and forth and bit my tongue, bit my lip, bit, bit my cheek, uh, slapped myself. We've had people who've flat fallen asleep, though, at the, at the controls, and the aircraft has gone into unusual attitudes and had to be recovered. And the guy uh, was so tired that when he got back, he laid down on the pad and that they couldn't get him to go back to his room. Are these pilots just complainers? Not according to John Gallopo, director of the Aviation Safety Institute, a nonprofit organization that monitors safety in the skies. Is their complaint that staffing is the main problem? Does that have validity? It has validity. It is a major concern. Uh, we had an accident last June uh, in Alabama. Uh, the crew had delivered uh, a person to Birmingham, was going back to its home base and it struck a power line over a river, and all were killed. It turned out that there were only two pilots for that operation, a 365-day-a-year operation with only two pilots. Now, something has to get when you have that kind of arrangement. Um, I think today the realization is that we have got to have a four-to-one ratio four pilots to one airplane, as a minimum. At the moment, 80% of the programs around the country have three pilots per helicopter. The remaining 20% are split between four pilots per helicopter and, believe it or not, two pilots per helicopter. You know, there are operators today who say, uh, you don't like flying for me, go ahead and quit. Uh, I'll find another Vietnam pilot in a, in a gutter in New Orleans. Okay. That there are, there are play, outfits like that? Oh, oh yes. Uh, I won't name names, but the point is that uh, these operators feel that the pilots need the job. Therefore, they will be subservient to uh, the management's wishes and go and fly regardless of the weather. The pilots think the Federal Aviation Administration should have separate rules for EMS flying that at the moment, the FAA regulates EMS flight under the rules of the air taxi business, with one special provision. Pilots can work longer hours than other commercial pilots if they have separate rest quarters when not in the air. John Gallopo agrees with the pilots on necessary changes. Four pilots per helicopter, helicopters equipped with proper instruments, and pilots trained to use them. But he doesn't think more government regulation is the answer. He thinks the insurance carriers will dictate the standards for the EMS industry. Otherwise, programs will be unable to get insurance and will be unable to operate. The true answers to the problem cost money. An extra pilot costs money, but so do funerals and lawsuits. Mm -hmm. A lot more than an extra pilot would. Harry Reasoner of CBS 60 Minutes reporting.